Alonzi. One minute. Oh, okay. Okay. Over the, in the just one minute. I would like to. Your name, please. I'm here. Your name. What's your name? Peter Ingasi. Can you put that in? Please just say a comment. I would like to. It's an honor to see democracy in action. It's an honor to see so many that are serious about the people say with their resources. And uh, when people responsible to do the best with the people's resources. And I, I think it's the best thing for every country to do that. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Deep belief as uh, Mr. Daniel, you have a lady from Alabama. I think she was called, she was not here, but I'm sure she's here now. A lady from Alabama, you say your name. And then, uh, so my colleagues who are on Zoom will give you an opportunity. My colleagues who are on Zoom will give you an opportunity after we are done. Wait, please, a little bit. Uh, thank you. My name is Anne Wai. Uh, my name is Anwai. I come from the uh, city of Birmingham, Alabama. Um, His Excellency William Ruto, Honorable Senator, thank you for this platform. We are so excited. I have a few things if you allow me, and you, my fellow Kenyans. I'm excited about the things you said about the representation of Kenyans uh, in America, in Kenya. Um, and uh, what I would ask to add you and His Excellency, if he's still on, is make those positions to a male and uh, a female representative, and also the ease of acquiring documents. I own a, a real estate company. I help these Kenyans uh, uh, buy land in Kenya. They have a big problem of acquiring property when they're still here, and we all know the immigration problem, right? So you, maybe you can also consider, as you consider the passports, consider the IDs, because with their IDs, they are able to acquire property in Kenya. Also, I would also urge for an economic advisory council in the government. This advisory council will help to advise the government on the needs of these people. And also, it will also it will invest in back home. Like, it will, the government will know our needs as diasporas because we are a unique group of people who have special needs that unless you come here and talk to us or the way Dr. Ruth is doing, you will not understand them. <laughs> the, the DP talked about double taxation. Um, I don't know how you back in the Senate can look at how, but that, that everybody keeps talking about 300 billion. Most people don't know that 300 billion is already taxed here. And if you're an investor investing in Kenya, that money gets taxed again. So I think that is really unfair because we are the backbone of the economy of Kenya. So I had more to say, but because of short of time, I'll just stop there. Thank you. I, these women, I have to say that I, I'm a member of a circle of women. It's called Kenyans, Kenyan North America Diaspora Circle. Shira Veronica, she can, she's right there. There are many other women here. We support this movement. We support, we don't have a tribal problem. Here we are all united in different tribes. Our problem is economic problems. Those people earning less than $2, our, our relatives. We, we pay those hospital bills, we have to maintain them. So some of us, some of our members go back to Kenya in a casket. Some of them go without anything and we, with, without the pride of being here. Why? Because we have to pay those rents, those hospital bills, among other things. Thank you. I am Mr. Kera, just a minute. If you exit a minute, I will have to. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mwa. Uh, my name is Wira uh, Wakapiro, and uh, the cause of reason for the people who are in the diaspora. I just wanted to uh, congratulate one of Kanyata. Anyway, he may not have mentioned that he's one man that we have uh, walked the political journey with for so long. And uh, as you hear him talk about the diaspora bit, because that is the backbone of our people, that is what we live here. That is what. I know what he's doing. We know what happened. On the Kenya Gazette of the uh, 12th of June, the bill was signed in the Senate. I can assure you, I don't let this man sleep because he promised us when he was here 
that we work on our field. And he's doing excellent for that. Mr. Kangata, as you go back to Kenya, I would always to make this one last point. These Kenyans are investing back home through many of you. And we have the issue of sec insecurity. Insecurity. Unze akijaga kanyumba kwa pale kwake, akionekana ameweka kawal hivi, vijana wanaingia. Please let's address that issue. Thank you very much, Honorable Kangata. And everyone else. Now, uh, let me allow this young lady, please. Uh, one Asante Mashmewa. Uh, good evening, my fellow Kenyans. Uh, we've had a deep talk, a lot of vision that he has for Kenyans, and we've already explained so much about the Unda Party. But we have one question. We never heard you mention about corruption, corruption and uh, what is going on on the judiciary. We understand Kenya has three arms of government, which is legislative, I mean, uh, the parliament and the, the executive, legislative, and uh, judiciary. So judiciary was not mentioned in your speech and was not mentioned in the DP speech, and which we understand the most corrupt arm of government right now is the courts, the Kenyan courts. So what are you guys doing to address that? And what is the plan for the, I mean, what's the DP's plan about the judiciary? Because we understand the judici, I mean, the legislative and the executive arm is elected by the people. Please watch what the people who are elected, and I mean, they are accountable to us. Who, who accounts for the courts? Who accounts for the judiciary? So that is something we need to know. Thank you. So uh, allow me to call my friend there, and then we move. Uh, I think it's now the first time. So just a second, so that I'm able to answer that question of judiciary. Uh, thank you, sir. I will read very quickly, and I will not try to elaborate. Uh, so on the other hand, We need to talk. We need to talk about the diaspora in the Middle East. We have sisters and brothers who are suffering there, and it seems our government is not doing anything. Uh, we want to talk about the promises that the people or the officials, the politicians make when they are coming to power. They make a lot of promises. They they they, uh, they do promises. They write promises, but they never. Do. Seen that, like here in the USA, if you are mentioning corruption, you have to resign pending investigation. Someone should not continue serving the government if you have been mentioned in corruption. Uh, we need a government that can take care of disabled people. In Kenya, we have a lot of people who are disabled, but since I was born, I've never seen really tangible benefits that goes to the disabled people. If you go to this street, I hope you have traveled well enough here in Seattle, you will notice that if you, are, you have a member who is disabled, they are taken care of by the government, when they are building roads, they have disabled way where you can go with your wheelchair, you don't need an assistant, you just drive your scooter, and you have all the roads that have been managed where the scooter will go well without any hindrance. Even in the government building in Kenya, they are not disabled, accessible, even churches also in Kenya. So let's look at that. Another thing is that we need a tax exemption for, um, uh, for diaspora Kenya who are returning to Kenya at least after working five years in diaspora. We need tax exemption. Why? We have been sending money for five years or ten years. For example, you are coming here like, with, uh, like a, uh, it's a doctor. When you come here, you need to go back to school. It's 
before you go to school, you go to do then your job. But when the government are coordinated with the American government and set up an examination center in Kenya, those people will come ready for work. They will not go to low work. Uh, also, uh, in, in, in fact, we need, we need to be and other leaders to invest in people in Kenya. For example, you will find someone here who is employing like 20 people using their salary here, 20 people. But you will find a politician who is worth 100 million employing five or 10 people here. That would be shame for those politicians. Coming to uh, judicial, there's one thing I want you people to know. Those, those six judges, one of them who was not appointed by the president, is a Bikani. He used to be here in Seattle, University of Washington professor. And we need to have a government who is recognizing diaspora. So uh, one of those judges is a diaspora, a Bikani, and we need the government of UDA to recognize such people. He is a diaspora, and he is a one of our own. Thank you. Uh, th 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 thank you. Maybe I don't know if they can get one or two uh, in, the in the internet on you. Please, maybe you can say your name. Yeah? Those who are who want to speak, you can say your name. Those who are uh, on Zoom, please raise your hand. Yeah, I can see Helen Bitao. Start with Helen Bitao. She is here. She is here. Helen Bitao. Uh, please, if she want to speak, unmute her. Ask to unmute her. Thank you. Helen Bitao. Helen? We can't hear you. Unmute yourself. Helen, unmute yourself. Thank you. Yes, we can. Thank you. I am next uh, another person. Yes, another person. We can go.